Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Scotty, Friday Night Flies has been a while, man. You look like you got a little bit of a suntan. Just a little color, eh? Where the hell have you been, man? Where you been hiding out? You're been in the here. Caribbean islands on uh, home of Rhiannon. <laughs> That fishing life was, is tough, man. I was trying to find her fishing. out there at Barbados. You're not fishing, you're soaking in the rays over somewhere tropical. Yeah, it's a good life, <laughs> it's a good life. But I'm back and it's cold. That's all I gotta say, it's yeah. freaking cold here. And uh, yeah, so it's Friday Night Flies, I'm Boulder. Welcome, we're in Spud Valley Sporting Goods, 1380 Birch Street, downtown Pemberton. And uh, I'm not wearing my Pemberton Fish Finder hat right now but uh hey bing bam check us out it ain't far from him he sleeps with it typically yeah yeah i'm just giving it giving it a break needs a little wash trying to convince the boss to get me a new one you know <laughs> so i figure if i keep wearing other ones then uh, he'll have to break and send me a whole bunch uh, but uh either way we're doing up a fly tonight this is a salt water pattern it is the peterson spawning shrimp and it's a pretty widely used pattern there's a lot of variations kind of like the squamish poacher for us out here you know everybody has their own little spin and of course when i was making it up i just looked at a whole bunch of different ones and uh came up with my own variation and uh worked like a charm not much out there wasn't putting their lips on this thing bonefish uh permit uh, a whole bunch of reef fish we were gobbling it down and uh tied it up in a bunch of different colors and uh that's about all that i got Let's uh, see if I still know what to do on the vise. Take us down. And uh, the there. boys have challenged me to use the uh, the Norvice. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, who was it that sent us this? Rich or something like that? Rich Walker. Yeah, Rich did. That's right. So this arrived when I was gone. So the boys have been holding on to it, waiting, waiting to see me do my thing. So this particular pattern here. Uh, of course, it does swim this way. I've done it with the chartreuse, and tonight I'm going to uh, tie it with the tan back. And uh, all white worked wonders, tan worked wonders, and whenever I got into uh, reefy areas and I wasn't fishing on the sand flats, a little bit of a darker tan color was working or a brown for the wing, but everything else on the fly stayed the same. The sand's so, pretty white there, though, eh? Yeah, pretty light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. the all-white and the tan one were probably the uh, the two that worked the best. So there you go. You can get a little profile of, of what this sand shrimp looks like. And let's make this happen. Now, bear in mind, it has been three weeks since I've tied a single fly. So uh, we'll see how she goes. And uh, I've never used the Norvice either, so we'll see how this goes as well. <laughs> I think. Uh, okay, that's fucked up. I need okay, to get that in there that. like this. Yeah, you do it now, though. See if we can get her locked in there. All right. Oh, She's God. on. Now, which way does this lock work? There we go. In is locked. In is locked. So, we got our thread. We're going to put on a little base. I guess I should be using the Norvice for what it's meant to be used for, and I could have spun that. Did you guys even try to do that? Oh my god, no. Everything happens. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to play with the exposure a bit here because you are. <laughs> I need to get my. I need to get keep closer. Keep it tight, man. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Well, I just loosened off my. Uh, this is where oh, Dred's pedal would come into use. Yeah, my man. thread too much. A pedal. Yeah. So it's that's a, why you need to be using the, the special thread. Or bobbin because it allows you to get your uh, thread out faster. Your thread right up there, right? Yeah, I don't know about this. You got the locking mechanism is. I have it free flowing. It's just that you need the other thread on there so that it pulls off the bobbin a little nicer. So as you can tell, this is Scott's very first time. And he's using the Norvice, oh. and he doesn't have it lined up with the top of the jaw properly, and that's why he's having the issues. That's why we're having some issues. So you got to have the back of the hook completely parallel with the uh, top of the jaw. 
Yeah, and you'll see a complete, <laughs> an absolute difference <laughs> we'll here. We'll try this again here. So let's get this in there. We're, we're learning Ugh. right with you. Okay, now I'll try spinning that sucker. Okay. Oh, but you got Let's let's do this. We're gonna try it over again. Okay, yeah. And you're going see, to wait the door a minute, Scott, now, This is how you end up with a 30 minute video. Here, Scott. Give me an exacto blade. No, we're gonna do this right. But listen, you gotta keep it parallel. You got the. You see how the eye of the hook is dipping? Yeah. You gotta put it in there so that it's completely parallel. Yeah, that's time, time, that's time. easier and, said and than done. And I'm gonna tell you right now, Norvice is. is gonna be like, there you go, boys. This is that's how you work. Well, persistence. That's what we got going. There you persistence, go. huh? Right. Okay, now that's a little better. Give that a little spin. Just give it a spin prior to putting the. You see how it's staying on the same axis? It's not going to be pulling on your, your thread nearly as much. I've been messing around with this thing a little bit while it's been parked here on the shelf. You've been playing spud. with it that spud, yeah, haven't you? I have been okay, playing with it spud. So, there you go. so now, All right, which what way am I done? doing this? Oh, okay. No, oh, there you go, buddy. Oh, well, you got to be careful of that hook at the back. So you really want this right at it, so you got See, control. He said it, it works really well for uh, tying salmon hooks and stuff like that. Yeah, right? for sure. I that mean, would make a lot of sense to me. You just put like how much thread on that hook. All right, so let's get these eyes so on this there. Is this I'm just gonna say. <laughs> so normally I'd be doing this with the white thread, but the Norvice is look it's hooked up here with this black, and you can see how this nice bobkin works. It's spring loaded. Auto recoil. Well, it works really like good one, because right? when you pop it over to the side there, you throw a half hitch over the back. Oh, yeah, and it just comes right back and in. It goes right back and... in and everything, right? Yeah, I mean, it's. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got this. It's pretty fast, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's only going to take you a little bit of time. I it's mean, like anything, man. I, like I, I well, told our followers. It's definitely a practice. It's a tool. I, it's it's not just a vice. It is a working tool. Oh, right? yeah. And that's what I said to Rich. I said, Rich, if Norvice only came out with an electric foot pedal for this vice. Oh, we'd be all over. Oh, that would be so bomber. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like you want to go slow, you just a little bit of pressure. You want to go fast. Yeah, I've seen uh, like the guys that are doing blood worms and crotomates and stuff. They just with yeah. electric vices. No, with the with the Norvice, oh, the Norvice. they're just like yeah. Yeah, and they're they're, they're firing them off like crazy. All right, so we got a little hot red uh, Antron thread here. We're gonna tie that in, and I want that to be the length of the shaft from behind the eyes. We'll get that in there. And I might just wrap that all the way back. I don't know. My, my body's not too bad with all that freaking around that I was just doing. It's definitely a different feel to this bobkin or bobbin. Yours is an automatic too, isn't it? No, it's just tension control. Just tension. So we got uh, the red in. Now we're going for just a little bit of marabou in the white. It's going to create a little bit of flow for the bottom part of the mouth of this shrimp. And I want these um, tips coming out just past the, the red hot spot we put in there. And it wound right up. Trim away that waste. Handy little waste basket on this thing. That I like. Okay, now I need some tentacles. Got some olive flash here. Quick thanks to Shelly. Thanks for uh, giving us the audio check. Thank just, you. Uh, we had some issues last week. I left the second mic on. I <laughs> think we were getting a little echo. Oh, the fun little, echo. But it wasn't echo, echo, echo. It was kind of like just a little bit of a delayed kind of echo. But we got that cured this week. Right on. All right, so we get this olive pearl flash in there, one on each side of the mouth. And uh, I'm making that twice as long as the mouthpiece here. So it really extends quite a ways out on this pattern. Get some of these little flyaways away. And I gotta try and remember how I built this fly. 
as I go here. It's been a couple of weeks. But I think we got her. I did make quite a few of them. Is that floss you used for the tail? What was that? That was Antron, Antron. floss. Yeah. So now we got some silly legs. It's a bar to purple. I'm going to take one, I'm going to cut it in half, and now I'm going to tie one on each side again. Maybe I'll see if we can do it at the same time here. Yep, there we go. And I'm tying it on about halfway on the on the egg, on the legs, not the eggs. Mm -hmm. and right up to the mouth there. Looking good. There we go. And I'm just going to leave these hanging off in the back for the moment. Next I'm going to go and I got some cream Antron floss. I'm going to cut myself a nice little strip of that. <coughs> I'm going to give a little moisture on it and that will help keep everything together. Give a nice little twist. Alright, so we're going to get that tied in right on top and again this is all going back to our tie-in spot for that first piece of material. Now our eyes. So I'll show you these sexy eyes that I made. Look at those things. How do you make those things? Go so ahead. I'm glad you asked. So to save you from having to watch me do it because it is a lengthy process and I do a bunch of them all at the same time. So you can see here, first I take my my mono and I melt it. Number two is um, some of the Solar Res Thick Cure. Yeah, yeah. Three is a Glow uh, Folk Art Paint. Right there. Where do you get that? Like a craft store or something? Craft store, Walmart. Walmart. So this is Glow Brillo whatever phosphorescence paint and I, uh, they had it in chartreuse orange and pink. So I gave the uh, gave it a little dip in there and then afterwards I gave the black eye with some of this black head cement that I got and then over top afterwards to seal everything off is solar res thin cure thin. so it's a multiple day process that I did the first day I cut melted and UV'd and then I left I, I put them all in um, I have them all in a styrofoam You're block. Hardcore, bro. You're yeah, hardcore. and I sat there and I did all the UVs and then lift them in the window for the day. Let it get real nice and hard. Yeah, that's the way that stuff gets really hard. Is is in the real sunlight. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'll tell you one thing. I got three letters for you. O C D. O C D one. So when did all all the cures the one day and then the Somebody, next day? Hey, 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 don't bump that camera. Yeah, be careful don't this camera. camera. Next day I come back and I uh, dip oh, them all in the in the colored paint. It's rough, it? it? So the next day it all goes into the color paint. We'll see if we can get the earthquakes to shake to stop. And then after I let that, okay, so just leave it. Yeah, we'll just leave it there. It'll, it'll stop. It'll, it'll shake it up. So after the uh, after I've dipped the paint, I leave it for a night. I come back the next day and do all the black eyes. Leave that and then come back the third day. And, yeah. Doing it that way. Looking good. All, all right. right. So we got these eyes, and now we're gonna stick <laughs> these on this uh, this bad boy here. And I want them to be about double the length of the shank there. So they're sticking out past the white mouth so that they are they stay pretty prevalent on the fly. And you can see there's a natural curvature. Now this fly, remember, is going to be riding this way. So we want that curve coming up and out to the sides. So when I'm putting them on, I'm tying it down. Get my length here. So I get one on one side, lock, match up the length, there we go, one on the other side. So your time on this, Scotty, I'm seeing you kind of, you're digging this vice, bro. Well, I don't know if I'm digging it, but I understand it. I do understand it. I can see how that could be a big challenge. At first, all right. So I'm gonna just get these things hanging off the back here before I go too far. Now I'm gonna do my first couple wraps of the Antron. 
And we're going to chop that down. Move it to the front and slide my thread in behind it here. All right. Now I'm going to take my last two rubber legs that I had hanging out in the back. Pull them tight, give a couple good wraps in behind it so that they are now going forward and they're positioned right oh, underneath. Geez, now you can go ahead and finish tying off those, those mono eyes. Nice and tight in there so that they don't pull out. Get rid of the tags of those. All right. Now we are ready to start building some of the top here. So first part of the wing is I got a little piece of rabbit here. I'm just going to take a clump of the fur. About a centimeter of it. You don't need tons, just a bit. Cut it off the uh, off the flesh. And the, uh, the bonefish guys, they love using rabbit because it really flows in the water. Probably doesn't last long in the salt though, yeah? Um, it seemed to be all right. What about it? Go around it. What do you mean by not last long? Well, it just it stays you know, on like there. Rabbit, it doesn't, like doesn't you, do anything. After you use it, dry it up a few <laughs> different times, it starts to get a little bit... Oh, there's no... no the hide. skin's not on it. Yeah, the no hide's hide. off. It's just the oh, fur. Okay, just the fur. Yeah, I just took a pinch of the fur off. Sorry. Boom. Just like that. I'll we'll just wind this up here, clean it up a little. Now we're going to come in with that antron and we're going to make sure that we get it in front of those legs. There we go. Follow that body down. Two boat. <laughs> I guess I do have a vice that spins. No, I was just being like, have a look on the outside. Oh. Turn the vice, make sure it's looking it's good. Happy. All right, so that antron's in. Now we're ready. So I've just stopped about one wrap shy of the eyes. I'm gonna do. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna change the um, the microphone. Not the mic, but the um, camera, the exposure. She's getting a little bright with all that antron. So we got ourselves a second tuff of rabbit. Oh, these hooks are so sharp. These <laughs> B10s's. My God. Did you get her again? Oh. God, they are That's so, the they hooks. are the sharpest hooks I've ever used. You know what gets me, man, are the um, mustad salmon hook. I don't know what it is about the bend, but if you're pulling back, like, for example, today I'm tying a, a flesh fly. And pulling marabou back across a fly, I don't know what it is, man, but I'm missing, like, so much of my thumb and my <laughs> index finger from doing that. Oh my god. It's enough for me not to want to tie that fly. But, <clears throat> but they work so damn good. Alright, so we did that second clump. We just finished off that antron right behind the dumbbell eyes that we put on there. And yes, I am going to give it a little spin, make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. If you have to, you can. Pull your rabbit so it sits nice on top. Beautiful. And last two steps here is we've got a little craft fur. You don't need a lot of it. It's just to give it a little bit of the, the back color of the fly. So I got myself a little wisp here. I'm going to pull out some of the short stuff on the bottom. All right. So now... When I'm looking at this, I'll put it this way so you can see it. I want those hairs. You can see how I have some few longer ones. I want those coming just to kind of meet up with the length of those antennas we put on. But we want that, that hair to split the eyes. That's looking pretty good right in there. I like the tan too. It's nice. So I'm just going to trim that square so i got a nice neat tie in spot. Try not to hook myself. <laughs> and I am going to tie this in right behind these eyes. So I do a couple, just check it, make sure it's riding on top, it hasn't spun too much. A couple figure eights will lock that stuff in. Hey Scotty, how's that bobbin? 
Um, is, are you able to... Yeah, you, you have to palm it to get yeah. the tension. Yeah, that's all right on top. And then to finish this guy off, I just use a little bit of uh, hair's ear. Now you can give it a hot spot. Let's give it a hot spot on this one. Go with some chartreuse here. And just dub that on pretty thin. We don't want to add a bunch of bulk. There we go, a little. Hands are a little dry. There we go. A couple of figure eights so it gets underneath. Once in a while, I just do a, an over thread that's uh, pretty much just thread. This helps to hold everything down. Give it a little whip finish. And if you like, you can go and pick out some of that hair's ear that you just finished with. So if you were using the white thread, and what I do like about it is that it, it comes up that's so many really times like. when I'm tying, I'm, I'm winding back up all oh, the time. Oh, I, I know. That is, that's pretty nifty. It saves time, eh? Oh, yeah. And don't <laughs> let it go without putting the nipple on. I figured that one out because it just goes shoof, yeah. through. And uh, spinny, spinny. I got a Velcro group stripping on top of it. Yeah, I got one right here too. There he is. That one looks like she's done. Time to build some more. Yep. Yeah. I've got a whole wagon at home. Yeah, that's the uh, shrimp on the Norvice. Those shrimp eyes are still sitting Bobby. good. Looks great. Oh, yeah, look at that go. <laughs> no, that's something I definitely need to play with. <laughs> Take it home with you. Feel like a rookie. <laughs> All right. Okay, so. Here, hold on. Let's get a quick thumbnail. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll go up top. Perfect. Okay, there you are, Scotty. That's a great fly, man. Whew, good fly. Boys in the salt water would love that down south, man, for sure. Yep. And yep. you know what? With a couple different variations, of that guy for pink salmon would be smoking, I bet you. Um, but yep. we would have to get a little bit more creative with the pinks instead of the whites maybe and keep that uh, chartreuse. A little chartreuse spot, yeah that I works. Think, mm. I think you're little, a little silver in there instead of the uh, yeah. the olive tentacles. Yeah, yeah that could I, be a... I think you're on a And I for... think on a, I've done a couple <laughs> on a big scale. Mm -hmm. I want to change them up for uh, some steelhead colors. Yeah, 100%. With some big eyes. Um, kind of looks like the, what's that one pattern, the drunken prawn or something like that? It's a hey, big just, steelhead pattern. Just in case we're not tying next Friday before uh, Christmas, maybe let's uh, wish our fall. Say Merry time. Christmas yeah. to everybody. Hope you have a great holiday season. And uh, let's see, we might uh, be covering uh, Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> It is a, starting to get a busy time for us, just yeah. this little crunch. We're getting the ice fishing season ramping up and going, and so we're doing all our equipment checks and ice checks, and it's the holidays, and eggnog's going to be flying. So if we're not back next week, Merry Christmas. And if we're not back the week after that, which I think we should be, Happy New Year. And, uh, yeah, keep on tying, and the boys are going to be back with a couple more shows to follow, so stay tuned. Check us out on YouTube. Facebook, the website, you got all the bases covered. All right, this is Boulder signing out. Oh, you know what? Oh, what else? The, we got a free seminar, fly tying seminar. Meet us January 12th. 12th? 12th? Yeah, it's huh. Friday. You got that memorized. Is that the Friday Put Night Flies on one? Is that? That's the fly tying yeah, one? Yeah, the fly yeah. tying. January 12th, yeah. we're going to be tying live. Four o'clock. In here. All are welcome. It's a free seminar, right? Yeah, free seminar. Free seminar. So if you are in our area or you have uh, some air miles you want to take advantage of, come on down. <laughs> come on down. The ski hill is open. The ice is frozen. And we're tying flies January 12th. So come and join us. And I think we would even talked about maybe even doing some shows while the seminar is going on. So yeah, we we'll see if uh, all the consent forms get signed. 
maybe there's some hoodlums. I don't know. Pemberton is pretty shady. So rough, either way, rough, uh, rough crowd around here. here. Oh yeah. So okay. stay tuned. Thank you.